the top 10 longest reigning monarchs in world history. With the recent passing of Queen Elizabeth II, I figured now would be the best time to make a longest reigning monarchs video, as no one poses any threat to making this list outdated for at least another decade. This list will also only include monarchs with verifiable birth dates and those who ruled sovereign nations. I have been looking forward to this video for a very long time, but before we go into the top 10, let's start off with an honorable mention to the current longest reigning monarch, Hassan al Bolkia of Brunei, who has currently been reigning for 54 years, and should he live for another 20 years, he will have surpassed everyone on this list and become the new longest reigning monarch of all time. Starting off at number 10, we have King Jaime I of Aragon. Coming to the throne at just the age of 5 in 1213 and having been raised by the Spanish Templar, he would reign for just under 63 years and is the longest reigning monarch of the Iberian Peninsula. His lengthy reign saw the fledgling kingdom of Aragon expand to Languedoc, Valencia, and the Balearic Islands. He would also play a major role in the Reconquista as he would conquer the islands of Majorca, Mansora, and Ibiza between 1229 and 1235. He would also sign the Treaty of Almeriza to establish peace and clear borders with their Iberian counterpart, Castile. Jaime proved to be not only a great warrior, but also a great patron of literature, art, education, helping develop the University of Montpellier. This included acting as a patron for the Catalan vernacular, even writing his own autobiography in Catalan. He also wrote the Libre de la Civisa, which included quotes from various famous figures from King Solomon to the contemporary philosopher bishop Albertus Magnus. Historians have argued his patronage of the Catalan language played a major role in the development of the Catalonian national identity. He would die in 1276 and would be succeeded by his son, Pedro III. At number 9, the famed Queen of the United Kingdom, Queen Victoria. Born Princess Alexandria Victoria to the Duke and Duchess of Kent and the granddaughter of the UK's longest reigning king, George III, it seemed unlikely the young princess would touch the throne as she had three uncles ahead of her and each was expected to produce a son, who would get precedent over her. However, neither of her predecessors had any legitimate sons, and she would ascend to the throne after the death of her uncle, William IV, in 1837 at the age of 18. She would be mentored by then Prime Minister Lord Melbourne in politics, who she grew close to like a father figure as her father had died just months after her birth. After Melbourne's downfall, she returned to her beloved husband, Prince Albert, for political aid. Albert would play a key role in creating Britain's constitutional monarchy, encouraging his wife to become less partisan and adopt a more ceremonial role. Victoria represented the complete transfer of power from the monarchy to the parliament that had begun during the English Civil War. Victoria would receive a great deal of popularity and admiration from her subjects as the British Empire continued to expand and rapid industrialization during her reign, with this era forever being tied to her as the Victorian age. She and Albert would bear nine children and would famously marry them to other European monarchs with her grandchildren, Kaiser Wilhelm II, Tsar Nicholas II, and King George V being the three major actors in World War I. Even today, many monarchies are descendants of Queen Victoria, earning her the epithet the Mother of Europe. She would pass at the turn of the century in 1901, concluding her 64-year reign and would be succeeded by her controversial son, King Edward VII. At number 8, King Fernando of Sicily. Fernando was the third son of King Carlos III of Spain, and in 1759, Carlos was forced to abdicate his Italian territory as he was forbidden to rule over both the Kingdom of Naples and Sicily and the Kingdom of Spain, giving the kingdoms of Sicily and Naples to his eight-year-old son. Fernando's regent, Bernardo Tucani, would attempt to undermine and neglect the young king, wanting to ensure he remained in power. But that would change when Fernando married the daughter of Empress Maria Theresa, Archduchess Marie Caroline, who would succeed in wrestling influence away from Tucani and dismissed him in 1777. During his reign, Fernando would follow his father's example in reforming Sicily by expelling the Jesuits, centralizing the government, and eliminating corruption. 
Unfortunately, Fernando would become embroiled in the Napoleonic War, and in 1798, after a failed attempt to expel the French from Rome, they would flee Naples to the island of Sicily, where the capital would be taken over by revolutionaries. Fernando's wife would continue to push for war against the French due to the execution of her sister, Marie Antoinette. Fernando would briefly be restored in June of 1799, only to be forced to flee Naples again in 1806 after another invasion from the French. After the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815, Fernando would be restored as the King of Naples and the following year would officially merge the kingdoms of Naples and Sicily as the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. He would rule as an absolute monarch until 1820 when a mass revolt forced him to create a new constitution. His reign would see continuous Austrian influence until his death in 1825, being succeeded by his son, Francesco I. At number 7 is John Imix Kawil, or Smoke Jaguar. Smoke Jaguar was the king of the Central American nation of Copan, located on the border of modern-day Mexico and Honduras, becoming king at the age of 15. His first 26 years as king were uneventful and would primarily become known for ordering the construction of various monuments and temples. He reigned for 67 years and died at the age of 79, being succeeded by his son, Ukaltun Uba Kawil. At number 6, Kaiser Franz Josef I. In many ways, Franz Josef represented the last of the old guard monarchs. His mother formed a coup against his uncle, Emperor Ferdinand, who was viewed as too weak to suppress the revolution of 1848. He would successfully guide the Habsburg Empire for 67 years during Europe's most turbulent times. After ascending the throne, he would successfully put an end to the revolution, but not the underlying troubles. Franz Josef's first 20 years remained turbulent, as he not only dealt with the struggle for German hegemony with Prussia, but also with the Hungarian nobles who demanded more autonomy. He would establish a new constitution which centralized the state, creating a neo-absolutist monarchy. As the president of the German Confederation, he also attempted to maintain the Habsburgs' traditional dominance over the German nations, but after the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, Austria would be defeated by Prussia, leading to the Hohenzollerns to take the torch from the Habsburgs and begin the formation of a unified German Empire. After the defeat, the Kaiser decided the best course of action for the Habsburg Empire would be to further cultivate the non-German lands and in 1867 would sign the new constitution establishing the dual monarchy, granting the Kingdom of Hungary more autonomy in the Austrian Empire now called the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The next 30 years of his reign would be peaceful domestically, but many personal tragedies would strike the aging emperor. In 1867, his younger brother, Emperor Maximilian, would be executed by revolutionaries in Mexico. This would mark only the start for many more family tragedies. In 1889, Franz Josef's only son, the heir Crown Prince Rudolf, would commit suicide with his mistress, which led to his beloved wife, Empress Sissi, to go mad and to go into seclusion in Switzerland, where she'd be assassinated by an Italian anarchist. In 1908, Austria-Hungary would officially annex Bosnia despite many protests in the Balkans. The expansion into the Balkans would lead to the rise of terrorist pro-Slavic nationalist groups, with the Black Hand becoming one of the most prominent. In 1914, a Serbian student named Giovanni Princip who was connected to the Black Hand, would successfully assassinate Franz Josef's heir and nephew, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, leading to the Kaiser to give Serbia an ultimatum or face war. The July Crisis, as it would be known, would lead to World War I. He would not see the conclusion of the war, as he would die in November of 1916 in the Schobrunn Palace due to pneumonia, and would be succeeded by his grandnephew, Karl I. The empire would shortly thereafter be dissolved, but Franz Josef still remained a respected figure in Austrian history, and to much of the former empire. At number 5 is another early Central American king, Kimnich Jabal Pakal I. Becoming the ruler of Palenque at just age 13, Pakal the Great would expand his kingdom's influence throughout the region. He would also commission various construction projects, 
and act as a great patron of the arts producing the most prominent monuments and statues of Mayan culture. Pakal would die in 683 after a reign of 68 years and would be succeeded by his son. At number 4 is Johann II, Prince of Liechtenstein. Prince Johann ascended the throne at the age of 18 on November 12th of 1858. Johann proved to be a quiet and reclusive man, preferring solitude over social events and never married. However, he remained dedicated to his people. Johann would act as a great patron of arts and science, and would also steer Liechtenstein away from German influence, removing them from the German Confederation and abolishing the army. Johann would also establish the nation's first constitution in 1862 and then revised it following World War I, turning Liechtenstein from an absolute monarchy to a mixed democratic parliamentary system that is still used to this day. Johann would die in 1929 at the age of 88 and was succeeded by his younger brother, Franz I. Johann was also the longest reigning monarch to have never had a minority regent since he came to the throne at age 18. He is only beaten out by the next two members of this list. At number 3 is Bumabul Adulaje, King of Thailand. Rama IX, as he is also known, like Johan, became king at 18 years of age. Though he spent much of his early life abroad, after the assassination of his older brother and predecessor, he would ascend the throne in 1946. For the next 70 years, the king would guide Thailand through the Cold War and various coups that defined Thai politics. He was greatly revered by the people of Thailand, and his decisions were almost always trusted by the people. He was compassionate towards his subjects and always took time to meet them. He was also a jazz musician and is credited for the vibrant jazz scene in Bangkok. Another fun fact was that he is the only monarch in the world to have been born in the United States. When he passed in 2016, the people of Thailand were devastated, much like the British's reaction to the Queen's death. King Bumabul Adulaje was a beloved figure in Thailand, quite literally worshipped as a god. He would be succeeded by his controversial son, Vajira Longhorn, who himself was the oldest heir to succeed the throne in Thai history. At number 2 is Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth II will no doubt go down as one of the most iconic monarchs in world history. Elizabeth was the oldest person to have ascended the throne on this list, having taken the throne at the age of 25 after her father's untimely death in 1952. Her 70 year long reign saw Britain completely transform following the conclusion of World War II. She oversaw the dissolution of the British Empire, a new wave of liberal revolutions, the Cold War, and Britain's general decline as the sole preeminent power. During this turbulent era, the British turned to her as a symbol of strength, grace, and courage. Even at the royal family's lowest point with Prince Charles's affair with his now consort Camilla Parker Bowles, the divorce from his popular wife Princess Diana, and of course her tragic death that some attribute to the Queen, she remained a popular figure. Much like her great-great-grandmother, she became synonymous with an era of Great Britain and her controversial heir will now have to prove himself as a worthy successor. No matter what, the British people could always turn to the Queen as a symbol of national pride regardless of the politics of their nation. And at number one, the longest reigning monarch of all time is King Louis XIV of France. The Sun King is one of the most famous kings in history. His reputation as a symbol for absolutism can be summarized by the quote, the state is me. Louis came to the throne at just five years old, and early in his reign, a revolution broke out. But he would survive it physically unscathed. Mentally, however, he made it his life's mission to pair the influence of the nobility that had betrayed him. When he came of age at the age of 13, he worked closely with his minister, Cardinal Mazarin, to hone his political vision for France. After Mazarin's passing, Louis put every skill and tactic Mazarin had taught him into action. He made sure that no minister would influence him, and that the nobility would never challenge his authority again. To achieve this, he paradoxically created the lavish palace of Versailles and forced the nobles to live there and serve him at his beck and call. For the next 50 years of his life, he would enact sweeping changes that would transform France into the center of world affairs, much like the sun in the solar system. 
I go into more detail about Louis XIV's historic reign in my Top 10 Kings of France video, but to summarize, his reforms to the legal, economic, and bureaucratic system led to France becoming a more centralized nation, allowing Louis to exert his will over all his dominions. The half a dozen wars France would involve herself in over the half century would consistently lead to her expanding her territory or sphere of influence in Europe. Although many of these wars were deadly, even causing mass famines in France, in the end, France became the undisputed juggernaut of Europe. By Louis' death in 1715 at the age of 76, France would reach its apex and would arguably fail to equal it until Napoleon Bonaparte's reign nearly a century later. At 72 years, Louis XIV's reign is the single longest reign of any sovereign monarch and is a 300 year old record that may not be broken for a very long time. I hope you all enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.